Hi there. This is Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks, and this is Sweet Baby James, otherwise known as James <laughs> Major. Okay, and tonight I'm going to talk about don't compare. Find what works for you. And we are going to have a great time on this show tonight. So, but before we do, I'm going to bring you back to Sweet Baby James, and he's going to introduce our program. Yes, welcome to Granny Rocks Our World. Grow. Otherwise known as Grow. Grow. <laughs> we have a lot of AKAs here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, once again, we have the opportunity to hear Granny share her wit, her wisdom, and her uncommon sense which usually does rock our way of thinking one way or the other. I hope so, I hope so. And we air every Monday and Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, so stay with us. What are you, Granny? Okay, so we've been having a lot of fun on our show lately. We have been having great conversations, and I hope that if you feel called to comment or to participate, please do. Because then we can address uh, what you're saying right here live. But if you can't and you watch us on replay, still put in your comments because I will respond to you afterwards. So the first thing, of course, if we're going to talk about what, find out what works for you. First, we have to figure out what does it mean that it works for you. Yeah. Right. Good. Good, good question. Good question. Right. So. I am thinking about that. You know, I always have to pee before the show, right? So <laughs> I run to pee and right in the middle and five minutes later, Tracy says, hello, hello. And Hi, she Tracy. sends us hard. Oh, it's so good to see you live. So, um, so I was thinking then about, well, what works for me other than, you know, peeing when I can, <laughs> you know, when it's available. And what I think that means is, you know, something that has a number of qualities, it makes me happy, it brings out the best in me. Mm -hmm. You see, that brings out the best in me, lifts my spirit, mm. is natural for me, um, you know, is a good fit for me. That's what um, I mean when I say what works for you. For example, supposing you say, Will, uh, I like torturing frogs. That's what works for me. Well, uh, 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 I'm not going to go along with that. <laughs> I know it'll be a shock to you, but I'm not going to go along. I, I'm not going to. I do not believe that that works for you. I, I think it probably work. Maybe it works for you. Ego, because it makes you feel like a big shot, like you're bigger than the frog, or maybe it gives you an opportunity to vent your anger and your frustration, but do it with a pillow. But it sort of cuts you off from yourself. It doesn't connect you to yourself and make you a better person. It makes you, oh, Ari he said, hi, Beth and James. Oh, Ari, I'm so glad to hear from you. I've been worried about you. I know you haven't been, uh, you know, you haven't been well lately. So I'm glad that you're here. Welcome. So if something is obviously cruel or hurtful, oh, like calling other people nasty things. It's not working for you, dude. It, it's, it's making you feel big, maybe, when you feel small, but it isn't working for you. It's not making you a better person. It's not giving you a lift. It's not really making you happy. So I didn't expect to go off in that direction, but I think it's important to make that distinction because you can say, oh, I know what works. If you're snorting cocaine, that really works. <laughs> <coughs> not that I have a clue. That's what it feels like to snort cocaine. <laughs> Except what I've seen in the movies. And, and Elizabeth said hello and hello, Elizabeth. So uh, there's a lot of things that we do that don't work for us. Being in the wrong job, being in the wrong relationship, having children when we don't want them, not having children when we do want them, not pursuing things that we really care about, and so on. Now, a lot of things don't work for us, and yet we often pursue them. Now, why do we do that? Well, then maybe it's because uh, we feel pressured into going in that direction. It's like, oh, when I grew up, it was like you were given a doll. You know, that was in the Stone Age when I grew up. <laughs> we were given dolls, and we went into home economics, and we learned how to sew and to cook. This was in elementary school. It's like... What the hell are we doing learning how to sew and cook in elementary school and holding dolls? Which, 
I was never a doll person. I, I wasn't into sewing or cooking or, or dolls for that matter. So uh, it didn't work for me. But that's the way the society was structured. So we should not beat ourselves up for having gone in uh, directions that did not work for us. Because most of us really didn't even have a chance. We were so programmed. I mean, that's the way I was programmed. I just rebelled. You know, I, I, I refused to shave under my arms or my legs or wear deodorant or do any of those other things. Everything hurt, and I wasn't going to do it. But, um, you know, most people just went along and went along, but it didn't mean that it worked for them. So, the, and the reason, I just want to tell you the reason this came up for me tonight is that today we had a great experience. I had my piano tuned. The one that I play on Dreams of Peace every Thursday night. That piano really needed tuning. It had been a long time. Todd says, hi there. Hi there back. So it was, you know, okay. It was, it's expensive, right? But we had this piano tuned. And when it was tuned, it was like I was on cloud whatever. I, I was excited. Cloud nine, that's the very one. <laughs> Cloud 88, or 88 keys. I didn't even realize how depressed I was feeling because my piano wasn't right. It wasn't resonating. See, it wasn't right. Now, you might have listened to it. I don't know. Did you ever notice that there was something wrong with the piano? No, not the one I heard it through the Internet. Right. And see, see you would hear it online. It probably didn't sound off to you. But when you hear it in person, the resonance of this piano is just enormous when it is in tone. And I didn't, I, I knew it needed to, but I didn't know what a difference it was going to make. And that started me thinking about how much I love the piano and how it connects to my spirit and how the piano is right for me. Not a digital piano, not an electric piano, not a pop music piano, not jazz piano, just me improvising on my beautiful seven foot piano <laughs> not a small investment big investment but how much that works for me playing that piano and keeping it tuned and feeling the vibrations oh my god that works for me nothing none of those other things even if you go into situations where well people are playing you know uh, electronic pianos digital pianos because that's what's done or that's how you can bring it but that's not me that is not my instrument See, and that made me think, what is your instrument? What works for you? What are the things that are really right for you that are natural? It's like, I didn't know this when I was growing up playing the piano. I didn't get, have this experience until I was 73 years old that I would just sit down at the piano. I never had a piano like this. And it had a, has a beautiful action, and I just play, and oh, my God, it's me. you know. And I wish for you that you could find an instrument for you. I don't mean a musical instrument. I mean anything in your life that is a way of you finding self-expression, finding joy, becoming a better person, being happier, right? Okay, now you could maybe, what works for you, maybe being with a person you love, whether it's a man or a woman, old or young, you know, maybe you're a man, you want to be with a man, or you want to be with a dog, or you know, whatever, you know, who cares what everybody thinks? If that makes you happy and makes you a better person and brings you closer to your essence, my God, just do it and stop worrying about what other people are thinking or even of going to jail, right? Hanging out with animals. Oh, yes. Hanging out with my dogs works for me. Not hanging out with chickens is hanging out with dogs. I know that works for me. Sleeping during the day and working at night. Maybe that's you. Maybe you are upside down. Well, then design a life where you get to sleep during the day and work at night. Don't think there's anything wrong with it. Don't compare yourself. Oh, well, I'm never going to become a millionaire if I do it that way because uh, everybody else is at work during the day and I really do. You, are you beginning to get the idea? Let's say you're a guy and you love cooking. You just love to cook. Not that you're a famous chef in France with the five stars and all of that, but just you like to cook, whatever it is. Do it, for God's sake. Be, have that be an instrument of your self-expression. Maybe you're a guy and you love to take care of kids. Ooh, great. Do it. 
Maybe you're a woman and you love to not take care of kids. Yes, do it. <laughs> See, what the problem is, is when we look at the comparisons and we start looking at the rewards for what we do. You get what I'm saying, guys? For instance, well, you know, why, why do we compare? Well, we may be programmed in certain directions and we are totally unconscious that we're even comparing ourselves, our nature, with the way other people are. We don't even notice it because it's like, well, don't you do this? Like, aren't you? I, you know, like I said, when I was growing up, but it was, what are you going to do when you grow up? Well, I'm going to get married and have children. That was it. Those were the options. You know, not that I was going to become a geek or a scientist. And then there are women, of course, who broke through that and thank God or wanted to be president or something like that. But we're programmed in certain directions so that we are unconsciously comparing who we are and what works for us with what we have been taught. Eek. And very often, we are the losers in that comparison. You know? uh, I did not like the humor. I don't like a lot of humor. I mean, com comedians and humor, I find it mean. Very, very mean spirit. doesn't work for me. I don't listen. I don't listen. You can't, you can't force me. I mean... Thank God I'm not in a concentration camp, but in concentration camps, they probably weren't playing comedians anyway. So I don't think I ever have to worry about that. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be captured by ISIS and put in a camp where I have to listen to comedians. So you see what I'm saying? Uh, I don't like it. I don't need to. Let's say I meet a guy and he likes comedians. Well, honey, I love you. You watch. Now, sometimes I just like being with the guy. And I'm willing to put up with the comedian because I'm having fun just being with him. That happened to us. And that's fine then. What's working for me is being with James watching the comedian, not <laughs> the comedian. You get what I mean? Maybe I'll go and listen to certain kind of music that doesn't really work for me, but because I want to be with the person who's listening to the music. That's not a sellout. That's saying this is what works for me is being with James. Or maybe what works for me is, honey, you know, I'm just going to be a bitch if I go there. I, I'm going to want to come home. I, I, I really can't listen to this one more minute. Could you shut that thing up? <laughs> right? Or go listen to it in another room. Go listen to it, or you can go listen in another room. Okay. Now, sometimes we are pressured by necessities like jobs, and the job just doesn't happen to require you to work at five, you know, in the middle of the night, it, it, it's, it's a day job, you know, or it's taking care of children. Well, they're sleeping at night. That would be very hard to do. So sometimes we have to adjust our lives. Sometimes we have no choices. Sadly, a lot of people have very few choices. I'm talking about those of us who have any kind of choice at all about our lives, right? We can say, you know, this is my rhythm. This is who I am. This is what I want to do. And sometimes we're pressured because we're hanging out with social groups with certain values. And so we can't break out and figure out what works for us. But now, there's even deeper reasons. Ta -da -da -da. If we have to figure out what works for us, we are really accountable for our lives rather than hiding out behind certain guidelines or certain guideposts or like our authority figures. I was just talking to a guy who came for a session the other day. I know I'll never see him again, but he came for one. And, uh, you know, he was going to design his whole life to replicate what his father wanted to do. You know, he's using his father as a guidepost, but it's not him. I know, I, I knew it wasn't him. I, it probably wasn't his father either. But okay, sometimes we hide out behind things we've read. Oh, I was inspired by this. That's it. I want to be a pirate because <laughs> you know I read about that and it seems so excited. Sometimes we're just hiding out behind social norms, and sometimes, guys, mm -hmm. we're hiding hiding out behind that which is rewarded right 
well, of course I want to go into this direction. You know, oh, I was just reading about Andrew Yang, who's running for president in the Democratic primary. And he was raised to be a lawyer and to be, you know, a certain way by his parents who came from Taiwan. And believe me, there's a lot of pressure when you come from an immigrant family that you have to make good in a certain way. And uh, he had to fight that in order to say, I don't want to do that. I want to. I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to build things. I want to create things. And uh, that's an example of that. Uh, this is finding out what works for you, what is a good fit. It's, I'm not talking about a fantasy like, oh, my dream is to become a famous pianist and play at Carnegie Hall. So we, you know, I want to play Carnegie Hall. So we decided to call our living room Carnegie Hall. That's right. And I can play Carnegie Hall. But you, you get what I'm not talking about dreams. I'm talking about the doing, the everyday life of doing something that works for you, that is natural for you, that is comfortable for you, that makes you happy and makes you a better person. Because I think we all know this. When we're unhappy, we're not better people. We're grumpy people. <laughs> and grumpy people are not better because they're grumpy. So we may be afraid to find what works for us because it may threaten what we're doing. But you need to find your instrument, your piano, your version, drawing, dancing in the living room, singing in the shower, taking walks, writing stories, playing ping pong. I don't care what it is. If it fills you with joy, and your ego doesn't get a hold of it, and suddenly now you have to be the ping pong champion of the world. And you can just relax into it. And you're probably pretty good at it by nature, not necessarily the best. Debbie says, hi, James and Beth. Hi, Debbie. I know you're going to work, right? <laughs> and we face the fear of loss of the potential rewards of doing what doesn't work for us, then life becomes more joyful. And we are feeding our spirits. See, when you have lost connection with your spirit, when you're feeling kind of down, you may have lost the connection with your own spirit. And finding things that really work for you will usually reconnect you to your spirit. Maybe you just want to take a walk in nature because then you feel your spirit. And that alone will give you that lift. Stop waiting for whatever it is that you're waiting for to be happy. Find what works for you. Crochet. Play crossword puzzles, do something, dance naked, <laughs> go to bed, take a nap in the afternoon. And once we get that we haven't been doing what works for us, but we've been doing other things, let's recognize that we have been starving our spirits and hurting ourselves. Don't beat yourself up for having done it. Have compassion for yourself for having done it. Feel inspired to do what works for you. See what you still can do no matter how old you are and support that. So coming back to the piano, many of you know, you know that I've been sick and disabled uh, pretty much all my life, probably all my life. And I had to stop playing the piano when I was 15, and I started to play the piano again when I was 73. 
I, I had no idea. I thought I hated playing the piano because I was doing it wrong. I wasn't playing in a way that was natural for me, which is to sit down and improvise. I was playing the way I was taught to play. That didn't work for me. Now I sit down on the piano and I find my spirit and it gives me strength. It's a whole different picture. I'm not playing for you, although I do play for you. As a matter of fact, every Thursday night I play for you on Dreams of Peace at 7 p.m. Pacific time, but that's only because I want to share the joy that I feel playing the piano. And so there it is. It's never too late. You don't have to do it well. My fingers are crippled and I don't care. I'm playing the piano. If you are the clumsiest ballerina on the dance floor, go for it, not as a dream, but as something that feeds your spirit. So come back every Monday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time for Granny Rocks Our World. And please like this show. Love it, like it. Give, send me your comments, even if it's afterwards, and please share it. You know, there are too many people in this world who are doing what isn't working for them, what staying in jobs that don't work for them, staying in relationships that don't work for them, being in professions that don't work for them. Find your instrument of being. Find what feeds your spirit. Become that better person because you are getting the food. The plant that does not get fertilized in some way will eventually <laughs> give yourself that soul food. Yeah. Anything else? Did I remember everything, honey? That was everything. Okay. I so, just want to say I relate to it very much, and I've been through lots of uh, things that weren't me, things that didn't <laughs> work for me. <laughs> Good. And I would ask you about it, except that we are really out of time. And, uh, you know, please think about that. Think about this. What have you been doing that doesn't work for you? And what are you not doing that does? Or do you dare to find out? And don't compare yourself to others. Just, it's like it's you, it's you the inner you. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye for now.